Hi, and welcome back to Mysteries Channel. Today, I want to go over a cold case. Did I say cold? I meant a frozen case. It is hundreds of years old, and it's just as mysterious today as it was back then, and people today are still trying to solve it. So, you have likely heard of this case. If your parents were fans of Reader's Digest and bought those books, they might have gotten the one where it talked about the mysteries of it, the unexplained, and while his case was definitely presented in there, that's how I came to know it, and let's go over it. The case of Casper Hauser. Let's start. On May 26, 1828, a boy is found walking the streets of Nuremberg. He is extremely disheveled. His clothing is torn apart and very um, worn out, and he looks lost. And when he's approached, people realize that he doesn't exactly speak. He does have a letter addressed to him, and he does say something, but the only thing he says is that, I want to be a cavalry man like my father. They aren't sure, but they can tell that he is a teenager, maybe a younger teenager, 14, 15. They also find a letter pinned to him. Two, to be precise. They find two letters pinned to him. One is addressed to the captain of the 4th Squadron of the 6th Cavalry Regiment, and the man's name is Captain Von Vesnig. The letter, written anonymously, states that the boy was given into the author's custody as an infant, October 7th of 1812. The boy was instructed in reading, writing, and Christianity. The letter also states that the boy was never allowed to leave the house, not a single step, and that he wants to be a cavalryman like his father. Along with this was another letter, said to be from his mother. The letter states that the boy's name is Casper. His birth date is October 30th, 1812, and his father was a cavalryman, and he is now dead. Immediately, you see that there is a discrepancy there. The first letter says he was given into custody to the man October 7th. The second one says he wasn't even born until October 30th. So, just something to note. And because I got this part of the information off the internet and not off the book, the book doesn't go into that part of it really at all. It does bring up the letters, but it does not talk about, uh, doesn't bring up the dates or anything. So at this point, he is taken to the captain, Captain Von Vesnig, by the shoemaker. The entire time, Casper is just repeating over and over again that he wants to be a cavalry man like his father. And anytime he sees an animal, he's like, horse, horse, horse. When questioned about anything else, he became distraught, seemed to cry, and would just say, I, I don't know, I don't know. He just wasn't really giving up a lot of information at this point. So, again, he's taken to the captain. The captain questions him. And I should say at the end of that first letter, it does say this too. To the captain, do with him what you will. At this point, you can hang him or you can trade him to be a cavalryman. Choice is yours. Uh, captain says, you know, let's just take this kid to the police station. So once he gets to the police station, he is able to demonstrate that he can indeed write. He doesn't know how to write much. He can write Casper Hauser. So now they know the boy's full name, Casper Hauser. He understands the concept of money. And he also demonstrates that he can say um, a couple of small prayers, but it's obvious that his vocabulary is extremely limited. He, at this point in time, is in prison because of the time that time in history, um, you weren't exactly legally allowed, I think, to be a vagabond or homeless. So because he could give no account of himself and he was also young, so couldn't just leave this kid out to roam the streets. They put him in prison because they didn't really know what else to do with him anyway. And while he's there, he spends two months in jail um, in a place called Lugensland Tower in Nuremberg Castle. And he was also placed in the care of the jailer, and the jailer's name was Andres Hittel. So Casper was in good physical condition. He had a healthy complexion. He could walk well. He climbed at least 90 steps a day just to get to his cell, but he did seem to be intellectually impaired. When he was first found, he had a toy horse with him, and he called all animals horse, and he called all people boy. Those were the few things that he knew. Horse boy, I want to be a cavalryman like my father. I don't know. A couple of prayers, and that was about the extent of what he understood or could communicate with people. But within weeks... He was learning more and more, and he could better communicate. While in prison, many couples would come to visit him. He was becoming a sensation of the area. People were definitely talking about this kid that just showed up out of nowhere that seemed to have a rough go at, of it so far, and they would bring him treats and try to offer him food and converse with him, but he always refused everything. 
except for bread and water. Mayor Bender would also come and visit the boy, and he, he proclaimed at one point that Casper actually has a pretty excellent memory and that he was learning extremely quickly. In fact, the mayor had many conversations with Casper and learned more and more about his earlier life. Casper told Mayor Bender that for as long as he could remember, he spent his life totally alone in a darkened cell. The cell was about two meters by one meter wide and one and a half meters high. He had a straw bed to sleep on, two horses, and a dog carved out of wood. And that was it. Those were his toys. And that was the conditions that he grew up in. He claimed that every morning he would wake up to find rye bread and water next to his bed. And periodically, the water would taste bitter and it would cause him to sleep long and hard. And on those occasions, sometimes when he awakened, the straw of his bed would, be, would have been changed or in his nails would be cut or his hair would be trimmed, that kind of thing. Hauser also claimed the very first human that he ever came into contact with was the mysterious man who visited him not long before his release. The man always took great care to never reveal his face. He taught him how to write his name by holding his hand and repetitively showing him the movements with his hand over and over again. And that's how Casper learned how to write his name. And he also taught him the phrase, I want to be a cavalryman as my father was. And that Casper admitted that he didn't truly understand what that meant. This tale aroused great suspicion in the community around him. He became like an international star of sorts. People all over Europe were talking about Caspar Hauser. In fact, rumors started to fly. People were starting to believe that maybe he had a princely parentage. Maybe, maybe he was taken from his family as a way to secure somebody else in line for a throne. And then other people thought it was total BS. And they're like, con man, young one, but con man. His case was noticed by the Bavarian Court of Appeals and an investigation was started. The town of Nuremberg officially adopted Casper and money was donated for his upkeep and education. He flourished at this point in his life and he was living with a schoolmaster and the schoolmaster also discovered his talent for drawing. October 17th, 1829, Hauser didn't return back from his midday meal. He was later found in the cellar of his schoolmaster, bleeding from a cut on his head. He later recounted that while using the bathroom, the privy is what it says, but I think that means bathroom, he was attacked by a man that told him that if he stayed in Nuremberg, he would die. Casper recognized the man's voice as the man who brought him to Nuremberg. The schoolmaster questioned his account because it so happens that that day they had a disagreement where the schoolmaster accused Casper of lying. The police were called and at this point the schoolmaster and Casper's relationship suffer a little bit and he is transferred to the care of a person named Johann Bieberbach. The attack fueled many more rumors and also kind of put the spotlight became even bigger on him and people were seriously starting to wonder like, see the son of a prince? Could he be of Hungarian or English descent? Maybe he's from the House of Baden. Now it's April of 1830, and he has been living with the Bieber box for a moment, and one day a shot rings out inside of their house. Wow. Johan immediately runs up the stairs to find Hauser with a wound to his head from a gunshot. The story is told like this, that he was climbing on a chair and he was trying to reach a book, and the book was a little bit out of reach, and he began to fall and as he fell, he grabbed a gun that was mounted on the wall to, to try to stop him from falling. But when he grabbed it, it went off and it grazed his head. Crazy thing about this is Bieber Box says that all of this happened not long after they themselves had an argument. And Bieber Box said he was also kind of confronting Casper Hauser on his lying ways and the stories that he told. His relationship with this family completely soured at this point, and he ends up moving again, this time to the house of Baron von Tucher. Von Tucher also noticed the youth's propensity to lie and claimed that he had an exorbitant vanity about him. And eventually he is again moved. In 1831, Casper is now with a man named Lord Stanhope, a British nobleman. Stanhope had been fascinated like I said, he's an international celebrity at this point. People are talking about this boy all over the place. And Stan Hope was fascinated with this story and really wanted to get down to the bottom of it. He spends a great deal of money trying to clarify Casper's origins. 
They go to Hungary a couple of times to jog his memory because at one point Casper did say that his mother was a countess in Hungary. Casper also knew a couple of Hungarian words, so people started thinking maybe he's from the Hungarian house of royalty. Who knows? But Stanhope did try and he brought him there and nothing seemed to jog his memory. And took him on a, a couple of trips and even promised at one point in time, like, I'll try again. But I think even in the end, Stan Hope felt like he had been conned by this dude. He thought he was deceived and he released his charge to another schoolmaster. And this time it's in Ansbach, Germany. The guy's name is Johann Meyer. Schoolmaster Meyer, he was a strict man and he didn't tolerate Casper's excuses or apparent lies. And as a result, they had a strained relationship from the get-go. Casper's benefactors were losing faith in his claims, and Casper himself was unhappy with his current situation. On December 9th, Casper had a serious argument with Meyer, and five days later, on December 14th, Casper came home with a deep stab wound to his chest. He said he was lured into an Ansbach garden and that the stranger stabbed him while trying to hand him a bag. Casper stumbled away and made it back to the schoolmaster's house. So, of course, the police were called and they ran to the Ansbach garden and they're looking for this bag and they find it. Lo and behold, there is a bag. It's a violet, velvety bag and inside of it, there's a note. The note is written in German and it's in mirrored writing. Mirrored writing is when you have a mirror reflecting you write something and the mirror reflects it onto a page and you kind of trace it backwards and upside down, something like that. And the note says this, Hauser will be able to tell you quite precisely how I look and from where I am. To save Hauser the effort, I want to tell you myself from where I come, dot, dot, dot. I come from dot, 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 the Bavarian border, dot, dot, on the river, dot, 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 dot. I will even tell you the name. M-L-O with an umlaut. Three days later, Casper dies from the wound in his chest. An investigation in the Ansbach court suspects Casper inflicted this wound himself and that he had inadvertently stabbed too deep. They also believe that he had written the note because it was folded in a way he was known for folding his notes and it had misspellings and grammatical errors that he was known for making. He was buried in a cemetery in Ansbach. His headstone read in Latin, Here lies Caspar Hauser. Riddle of his time. The birth was unknown. His death mysterious. 1833. So, what about those royal rumors, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked because I was thinking the same damn thing. It's just one of those crazy things where it's like conspiracy all over it. Probably why I like it so much. According to contemporary rumors at the time, Maybe even as early as 1829, Caspar Hauser was hereditary prince of the House of Baden, and people believe that he was born on September 29th of 1812, died October 16th of 1812, who, according to history, it's alleged that the prince had been switched with a dying baby, and subsequently this man resurfaced 16 years later as Caspar Hauser. If this is true, his parents would have been Charles Grand Duke of Baden and Stephanie B. Buchanis? Don't know, I know I'm butchering it. They were cousins by marriage and she was also the adopted daughter of Napoleon Bonaparte. Because Charles had no surviving male heirs, his successor would have been his uncle, Louis, who was later succeeded by his half-brother, Leopold. Leopold's mother, the Countess of Hochberg, was alleged culprit of the boy's captivity. It is supposed that she dressed herself as a ghost, the lady in white kidnapped the prince and sent him away to be held somewhere else. Her motive would have been to make sure that the succession would have gone to her own sons. Now, anyone that knew Hap Kasper Hauser in his time after he surfaces out of nowhere will tell you that there was something about him. He was a liar. He was just very into himself and just a selfish lying person. And it seemed like nobody really liked him. So maybe he was royal if was leaning that way, if you ask me. Jokes, people. Jokes. <laughs> but obviously, nobody trusted him. He is not a trustworthy person, and this is something that's lasted a really long time. I should also note that many people question the whole Lord Stanhope thing. 
They thought that he might have been part of the cover-up. Looking at the way he dealt with everything, I don't know that he was really covering anything up. I mean, he was taking them to different countries just to see if, if maybe he could figure out this guy's origins. I think he was fascinated by this case like almost everybody at that point in time was. So every once in a while, I kind of go and I just check to see if anything is known about random things that I was interested in when I was a kid. And lo and behold, something interesting happened with this case. In 1996, blood samples were taken from a pair of underwear that were supposed to have been Casper Hauser's. DNA analysis was run on it, and guess what? They found no match, especially no match with the House of Baden. But still, the rumors persisted, like, this is a case that won't die. So in 2006, another test was run. This time, they didn't use that DNA at all. They took hair from his head, they took six different spots, all six samples came back to say that yes, this came from the same person. They knew it was Casper Hauser. The interesting thing to note here is the hair taken from Casper Hauser did not match the DNA analysis run in 1996. Weird, right? I don't know whose underwear they took or how it got someone else's DNA on it, but that DNA originally, they have no idea who it was, but it was obviously not from the person buried as Casper Hauser. And something interesting did come back with that test. They took the segment of DNA from Casper Hauser and they ran it against a person named Astrid von Mettinger. She is a descendant in the female line of Stephanie, the one adopted by Napoleon Bonaparte. The sequences were not identical, but the deviation observed with the DNA examined could not exclude the House of Baden. Now, I wish they would run it one more time because it's 2019 and they can perform magic almost. So I wish they would. I mean, shoot, they're catching killers and rapists all over America with DNA at this point. They don't have to rely on the mom's side. They don't have to worry about the mitochondrial DNA. They can just run it against anybody from there. So let's run it one more time, please. Please, please. So yeah, Casper Hauser, that's the full-on case of it all the way up until present day. I mean, well, up until 2006. Fingers crossed they try one more time because, I mean, hell, they waited a couple of years to run DNA. Why not just do it one more time and get it right? Anyway, hey, if you like what you watch, please say uh, something in the comments. Let me know. Have you heard of Casper Hauser? Do you think, do you think it's a royal intrigue? Could be. He was disliked. He was kind of a shitty person. Maybe he's royal. I'm just saying. Anyway, please subscribe, give me a like if you liked it, and leave a comment. Thanks. Bye.